Oh, so it's now streaming live on Facebook in my corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Meaning is now streaming live on Facebook. And we are live. <laughs> Thank you so much to my guests, Jesse Quinones and Alex Montanane. Alex, I've watched you fight many times and I always have to check myself saying your name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining two, me. Two, direct, director and actor with two tongue twisting last names. <laughs> well, you guys are here to talk to me about the release of Cage Fighter Worlds Collide. Jesse, you're the writer <clears throat> and director of the film. Alex, you're the lead actor. So, guys, very exciting, even exciting in the way that you're launching it. Jesse, tell me about it being live on Fight TV on the 16th of May. Yeah, I mean, um, so for, for us, you know, obviously there's a lot happening in the world right now, you know, and um, we did have um, uh, more traditional plans for release in, you know, in mind, but obviously um, with COVID-19 happening, the world has changed and, and, you know, we're in very unprecedented times and, and we have to kind of uh, respond in unprecedented ways. And I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, mixed martial arts events that have been canceled and wrestling events have been canceled. And we just thought, um, you know, why not give fans of MMA and wrestling something to kind of enjoy, um, you know? And so uh, Fight TV, who have been a partner with us from the kind of uh, the very beginning, uh, it just felt like a, a no brainer. Um, they have the infrastructure and, and the fan base and, and we have the film and we just felt like this could be a really cool way to kind of partner up and and create a, a, a virtual premiere. You know, we would, we, I would have loved to have filled a, a cinema with hundreds of people, but um, you know, uh, I think this is the next best thing and it's a way for us to get the movie out as widely as possible and, and, and really give fans something to enjoy, you know? So originally it was gonna be a more traditional route to market and you've just been creative with still getting it out there to people. Yeah, I mean, it's you. I think you know, uh, like a fight, you have to kind of roll with the punches and, and and respond, you know, and and be quick on your feet. And I think we just felt like the, we 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 sort of uh, saw this as not um, an obstacle, but as an opportunity. And so, um, you know, the the distribution landscape is always changing anyway, and we're just trying to kind of keep our finger very much on the pulse and and not think so much about how things should be done, but think about okay, where do our fans, you know, where would the fans of a film like this want to watch the film and, and so we're just kind of putting it on the platform that makes it easy for them to access and, and, and you know watch it. And what can you tell us about the film? Obviously you don't want to give it all away but <laughs> give us a little flavor of what happens. Yeah for sure. Um, so Cage Fighter Worlds Collide is um, it's an MMA, it's an action film, sports um, and it follows the story of Reese Gibbons played by Alex um, who is a five-time uh, light heavyweight champ of a fictional promotion called Legends. And um, he's clean out the division, you know, he's kind of um, on the verge of becoming, becoming like a global superstar, you know? And then, um, you know, his promoter, uh, played by uh, Max Black, played by Gina Gershon, uh, approaches him and says, I have an opportunity of a lifetime. I would love for you to take on this cross-promotional fight against a wrestling uh, star, uh, called Randy Stone, played by uh, John Moxley, who is an actual wrestling star. He's actually the current AEW champion at the moment. Um, and so at first he's, uh, you know, Red, uh, Reese is kind of like, oh, I'm not sure. That sounds like a bit of a gimmick. But, um, you know, he starts yeah. seeing the, the crossover potential, which is all kind of, it's happened in real life. You know, Connor versus, um, Connor versus uh, Floyd Mayweather and things like that. So, um, you know, he, he takes the fight and it ends up being the biggest fight of his life, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's, 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 a, and it kind of follows that, you know, his, his journey, um, taking that fight. And I won't, I won't say anything else. And we've got Chuck Liddell in this film, like MMA yeah. royalty in this film. It's, Luke Rockhold in this film. There's a cameo by our own Brad Pickett, UK pioneer right. for MMA. Absolutely. And then we've got, you know, some wrestling stars, John Moxley. We've got Christian, uh, Jay Riso. Um, I mean, I used to play with uh, video games, WrestleMania video games with Christian's characters. So that was a trip, you know, so... Um which I don't think he liked me mentioning because then it showed his age. Cause I'm like almost 40. So then it's like, well, if you played it as a kid, 
but you know yeah it's been a trip you know to kind of work with these guys I love watching combat films like this but sometimes the actual fight scenes themselves can mm. I don't know just look a little bit cheesy or naff was it really important to you to bring in real fighters to add to the authenticity of the film Absolutely. I think, you know, I agree with you. A lot of times, you know, I love fight films, but sometimes the, the areas where they fall apart is the believability of the fights. And, you know, yeah. Alex um, is not only the lead actor, he's actually the fight choreographer. And we were working on the fights for like a year. Um, uh, I mean, maybe Alex, you want to speak on this, you know, in, ter in terms of how we kind of devise the fights and, and yeah. um, you know, um, try to bring that realism. For sure. Jesse, Jesse had a, an idea and, um, we, we went off kind of like a skeleton that Jesse, that Jesse made. And then we just uh, bulked it out and made it look as real as it could uh, for the fight fans. Because like you were just saying, we wanted it to look believable. You know, we wanted everyone to watch it and be like, are they acting or is this actually a real fight? So yeah, we, it took months and months, but we, we grafted hard. And um, I think we pulled it together. I'm pretty sure you did. So um, when you guys watch the film, you're going to be real stoked by what you see. No, there's some definitely some real bruises. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was no, no, you know, Alex definitely he, he put his body on the line, you know. So no, that's it. That's it. I got, I got like Jesse saying, I got had, I, I um, got injured, man, when I, when we were doing the choreography, I ruptured the top of my adductor and the bottom of my abs, either side of my groin, almost complete tears. But we soldiered on, and uh, it was great having, uh, of course, Jesse there, the uh, stunt guy, and John because we the uh, Jesse and uh, the stunt guy Daniel, they um. They kind of broke the fights down even more and made the fights work, even though I was injured, which was, it was really nice to see. It's, it's like an art form. So I can't wait mm. for you guys to see it. Mm. I'm really excited to see it. And obviously you're a, a big name on the UK circuit. Everybody here knows you from Bama and Cage Warriors. Yeah. And now obviously you're signed to Contenders. Like, yeah. how do you balance doing the acting side of things and still being a fighter? Um, it's, it's tough, it's tough. I hadn't been a full-time dad, so <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got four kids as well now, so um, it's, a, it's a lot, it's a lot. But um, I think the, the acting and fighting almost go hand in hand, because um, obviously I've got to be strong and fit for my fighting and for the acting, because I want to be like an action star. Uh, and I, I guess I'd say my acting role is just like a fight. You know, I'm going to prepare a few months before, and then when I get in there, I'll give it my all. So yeah, if I'm gonna, if I like, especially with Cage Fighter coming up, I would, I'd, there's, there'd be no um, fights booked before then. Yeah. So, or like contenders, if there's a, I'm gonna fight for them. So there'll be no acting roles before that. Cause I have to, yeah. I can't, you can't do both at the same time. Cause then both will be 50, 50, but I got to give a hundred percent for everything. So it's either acting or fighting at one time and then it kind of must. So. Although saying that when Bisping won the belt was when he'd taken a last minute fight against yeah. someone in this film actually, <laughs> but taken a last minute fight and, and walked straight off the film set almost onto the canvas. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Bro, maybe the rest on them good, you know, sometimes resting your body, <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, could, that could have worked as well, you know, and uh, maybe he was just super relaxed coming off of there. The film set <laughs> you got offered a uh, title fight man for the UFC just, just do it you know <laughs> it's probably not your your usual uh, warm-up for a fight but there no. we go no. and I believe you were supposed to be on the contenders card that was going to be in Florida next yeah. week yeah yeah it was for the light heavyweight title I've moved up um to light heavyweight it's just my natural weight I walk around at about 95 anyway so and you've only just moved up from welterweight <laughs> I know I was I was I went from welter to middle well I was what to, for, to get to welter I had to diet all year round and I was just grumpy all the time my poor kids man and my wife I feel sorry for them you know um they had to put up with my grumpiness I went to middle weight and it was, I felt okay but then still I had to cut weight so I was like you know what I'm just gonna eat enjoy myself Go to the gym, you know, and yeah, now, now, um, how does it feel at light heavy? I feel great, man. I, feel, I just feel super powerful. I've got loads of energy. I don't have to cut weight or, or only like water weight, so like three kilos or something like that, which is nothing. So, yeah, instead of cutting all the way down to 77, like killing myself, looking like a skeleton. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And what about life in lockdown? How are you managing to stay active? And kind of like you said, you've got to stay active. 
for yeah. acting roles to look good and for fighting. Yeah. I'm lucky I got my two boys in the room now. They, I've been taking them on like 5k runs. They've been dying, but they've they, they're keeping me going. Um, mm -hmm. I've been pads with them. Um, and just, just general weights. I've been using them as weights. So they've been one on my back, one on my arms. I've been squatting with them and stuff like that. So <laughs> just doing what I can. <laughs> it's fun. And I'm asking everyone at the moment what their top tips are for, for lockdown and staying sane and just keeping busy. I'll ask you both, Alex, first of all, what are your top tips? Well, keeping active. Yeah. Um, have, a, have a routine, just like, uh, just like in a, your daily life. You know, wake up maybe go for a run, come back home. Even if you're doing like 100 press-ups, 100 squats, 100 sit-ups, that's going to help. Um, yeah, and then, you know, continue as if there is normal. But yeah, keep active, keep a, have a routine, for sure. And Jesse, how are you staying sane? Uh, I've been watching Game of Thrones. I got, I've never seen it, and I've been just, I've, I've seen about 80 hours of Game of Thrones. So that's... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's been my, my obsession, which has made me super paranoid because I never, everyone in that, that show is like trying to deceive each other and trick each other. I was like walking around like some kind of <laughs> paranoid Game of Thrones character right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's not the best thing to be watching then. <laughs> or it is if you're in the film industry, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so... You said obviously it's changed the way that um, the film's being released. It's on Fight TV. Mm -hmm. Tell people how they can watch it on May 16th. Yeah, I mean, basically, um, there's a link which um, we're kind of um, spreading far and wide. Um, they can, it's, it's like a tradition. It's um, we're almost treating it like an event, like, you know, not like not a, a movie premiere, premiere necessarily, but like a fight event, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, the screening will be taking place 7 p.m. on May 16th. It'll have um, a Q and A session right before the screening, like a kind of pre-show thing, which would be it'll be with myself and the cast, and then following that will be a post-screening Q and A it's on a similar setup like this, like a Zoom uh, situation, where people can um, you know send questions to our cast and and myself and the producers, and we can answer them live uh, for a post-screening Q and A. So we really are, um, you know, it, it's it's not just a movie; it's an event, and I think that's the really exciting part about it. And we're just you know, with all the new technology that's that's out there, we're able to really bring the film to the world, you know? Yeah. And this film's been a long time in the making, hasn't it? I spoke to you at the, yeah. the beginning of the, of the whole <laughs> process where you were just trying yeah. to get investment in the film. And I know yeah. the past changed and even the storylines changed quite a bit from, yeah. from when we Absolutely. last spoke. So, yeah. like... Tell me about that process. Is that normal? Do you just, like you said, it's like a fight. You just roll with the punches. Yeah. I mean, my first feature film took me 13 years to get made. So I've cut the time in half. Uh, if, if, <laughs> that's, that's one positive I can take out of it. So this took me five years. I started writing this in 2014 and what 2020 um, is when it gets released. And, and so that's almost half. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's a long process. You know, the writing of, you know, just getting the script right, you know, and getting it to a place where people, actors want to be in it and, and financiers want to back it. That took time. And then, you know, I think also um, just, you know, I needed the sport to get bigger. When I was first pitching this back in 2014, you know, MMA still wasn't quite where it was, but you know, when UFC is getting sold for like $4 billion and Connor is becoming yeah. a global superstar, it started giving investors comfort that this film could um, have an audience. And I think one of the big things that changed was, incorporating both MMA and wrestling into the narrative. You know, initially it was just an MMA storyline. And, um, you know, You've I think- opened it up to two kind yeah, of- Yeah, yeah, but, in, but in, 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 in a kind of an organic way, you know, I, I'm actually, you know, I actually, uh, before following MMA, I was actually a really big wrestling fan when I was growing up. You know, I used to uh, play all the video games and watch all the WWE events. You know, I was a huge fan of The Rock, I still am you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So I love wrestling. And then when I got older, I kind of moved more into MMA. And then when I started incorporating the, 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 the story back into wrestling and MMA, I fell right back in love with it. And now I'm like watching WWE and AEW, I got my kid into it. And I just think, yeah, I mean, we, we want to be, I want it to be respectful of both sports. You know, I'm not trying to make fun of either sport. And I think, I, I think we've achieved that. And both sports have tremendous athletes and they have, you know, amazing characters. And you know, I think, yeah, we're, you know, this is something that MMA fans will enjoy and also wrestling fans will enjoy. 
And Alex, Jesse said that you've been involved from the beginning. So I didn't realize for an actor that a film would last this long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've been with Jesse from the very, very beginning. Since, since 2014, like five yeah. years. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> it's a long project for you as well. Yeah, for sure, man. It's been a great journey, um, you know, especially to make it with uh, like your fr a friend as well, you know, and, mm. uh, and a fellow martial artist. It's been fun, man. Um, and hopefully this journey will continue and we'll have a, a sequel and uh, continue on from there, man. Make it a proper franchise. Amazing. Right, I'm just going to check the comments because we are live. Um, oh, there's a lot of, oh, just people telling you where they're watching from. Somebody watching from the Philippines. Hi, Bing Bong. <laughs> Somebody <clears throat> giving out their phone number. <laughs> That's not wise. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people watching and just saying hi to you guys. Uh, I'm just going to get some final thoughts for you guys. Why you think people should tune in? Um, I think people should tune in because, you know, I, I've always wanted, like, I've, I've always loved the Rocky films, you know? And I, I think that what, the reason they work, you know, and why I love them so much is that they're great spectacle, they're great action, but they're, you know, they're filled with heart. And, you know, fighting and combat sports is like the most, nor it's it's such a, perfect template to, you know, to tell drama, you know, and, um, you know, I always felt like the UK was, you know, never really quite had that good fight movie, you know, that spoke on, that worked on those, those levels, you know, that was an emotional ride that, um, you know, uh, had the great sequences and also had the scale. And, you know, I, I'm not ashamed to admit, I try to make this, this a big movie, you know, and, and, you know, when hopefully when people watch and they see the teaser, you know, we're filling stadiums and, you know, we wanted to make it look as big as any UFC event, 20,000 screaming fans, you know, really legit fights, you know, because I'm, I'm a martial artist myself, you know, I'm a jujitsu black belt. I don't want my friends start making fun of me like, man, those fights <laughs> look like crap, you know, so and I, and I kept I kept telling Alex that I was like, man, we got to make these look legit, man, it's because. And I like, you know, so like it was great having um, Daniel Ford Beavis, who's the stunt coordinator, because I do my, my my kind of area of where I'm comfortable is ground fighting. And like, I, I can, if I see somebody that's like not hips escaping properly or not applying proper pressure and side control, I can point that out and I can fix it. I can say, yeah, it's not quite selling on camera. Whereas he was really good at the striking so he can make sure the punches. So I think between us and obviously if Alex designed the fights, I really want to make sure these fights look legit like that you can't tell at all that they're not real. And um, yeah, I just think spectacle, emotional ride and, and you know, um, it's, a, it's a, you know, we try to make it rock and roll, a fun experience. Yeah. And Alex, I've got to ask what it was like being in a film with Chuck Liddell. Oh, it's amazing, <laughs> amazing. It was, uh, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing, you know, because we we um we done scenes where he was holding pads for me. Done, we actually worked out like offset as well. So it was um yeah, it was crazy. It was insane. And um, again, having him as your coach in the film, it just it added to the character. And uh. Yeah, man, it was just amazing. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. How long be before that felt normal, and you were just like, "Oh, there's Charles in the morning." <laughs> I think I think after a couple of days, because he's 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 quite chilled, you know. So and he, yeah. he would talk to you like normal and everything, just like like your mate. So um, yeah, a couple of days, and then it was like. like like how you doing Chuck you know going out for dinner he's a big he's a big he's, he's a big prankster too he likes to do <laughs> like uh, pranks on set which is kind of funny <laughs> do you think he's done with the fight game um yeah I think so I heard an interview the other day and um he's gonna start getting more into acting now oh that's what I, that's what it seemed like he's gonna do I think he's got a new agent mm. and stuff so I think this is the right path for him man I think he's really good mm. I think as well in this film he really he really shone man he's mm. really impressed uh, everybody on set he impressed me and I think everyone at home is gonna be impressed to see uh he came, the man acting he's a he's really professional too like he came he knew his lines he came ready with his scenes noted up with ideas and stuff like he take he takes it serious yeah so, for me, he's like on the Mount Rushmore of yeah, MMA. Sure. He is an absolute legend. So I'm sure there'll be his fans that just want to see the film just for that. So obviously you've mm. tapped into like a, another fan base there. But mm. um, yeah, well, I can't imagine. I can imagine because I, you know, like when I met Brad Pickett, I couldn't even speak mm. to him. Like I, <laughs> I literally 
couldn't speak to him for a few hours and then just yeah. in a very short space of time he became a, a mate and you don't think about it anymore but mm. it's just it's it's crazy it's crazy that you got to to train with him off camera as well <laughs> yeah, awesome man. Me, me and jesse got to train with luke rockhold as well as quality it was yeah <laughs> that, that so was an experience right like yeah, he's nice. Uh, he's cool. He's tough. He's tough. I mean, to be honest, I kept I, at the beginning when he came when he arrived in Regina. I kept saying, "Man, we got to spar. I want to spar with you." Because like for me, it's like if we're if you're playing golf, getting to hit, uh, you know, play holes with Tiger Woods or something, you know. And as a martial artist, the best way to experience is is to to roll with somebody, you know. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, let's go for it." And like, um, we started sparring, and uh, he. Uh, He's, like I, I play, I don't know, not to get too technical. I play like a deep half guard game, and then I remember I, like Alex kind of was saying, "Hey Jess, watch the left arm, watch the." And before I knew it, I was like, I was out, and he caught me with that same one arm guillotine that he got Michael Bishing with, and then he caught me like two more times with the same guillotine. I was like, "What?" So that was incredible. I love that. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> fun. Really. Yeah. He caught me with the same thing, so yeah, so, <laughs> same boat. Don't worry. <laughs> it's yeah, it was crazy. It's crazy. He's amazing. And what about him? Are we going to see him fight again? You think? Um, I would. I. I, I mean, I. I, won't, I wouldn't want to speak on his plans. I know that he's. He. Um. You know, he had that. That shin injury was a pretty nasty one that he had. Um. Yeah. Uh, and recurring, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He showed me some pictures. So that was pretty rough. But um. Yeah. I mean, I know he's definitely interested in, in the acting game as well, and he, I think he's really good in this. You know. Um. I mean. He's, he's one of them kind of guys that like can do, he almost can do anything. He's just such a natural, uh, you know, when he was on set, just natural and that, you know, you go and, you know, train with him. He's just a natural athlete. You know, he's just, he's just hanging around and then I see him put his foot on top of the top of the cage and do a full split. I'm like, this guy can do anything, you know? So it's, just, <laughs> it's crazy. And yeah. Alex, obviously with all the COVID-19 situation, you're not, sure when you're going to fight again next or when that contenders show will be rescheduled has it got a date yet um i know they were talking about like hopefully july but again it's all up in the air we don't know what's yeah. happening with 19 so um yeah obviously i would love to fight sooner rather than later but um yeah let's just all get through this and then um take it from there man i'm ready to go anyway i'm staying fit got my boys so i'm sparring with <laughs> so <laughs> I want it. Yeah, I'm ready, yeah. I was actually at your last fight. It was just down the road from me in Colchester. It's one of my favourite shows when Cage Warriors goes there. And yeah. it was a, mm. a tough fight, man. You, you did well. It was just a, a close decision. You know, yeah. Do you know what? Like I said to someone yesterday, um, as, and, uh, it's MMA, right? So I can't complain, but everyone always grapples me, man. They, they have the talk before the fight. They say, I'm going to stand with you. And I'm like, yes. Let's stand and thank everyone from my, the start of my career. I like this, everyone knows that I like to strike. So I'm like, let's just have a tear up. I enjoy that. And then, and then instantly they go for a double or go for a single. And then I'm, and in my head, I'm like, why? But it's like, it is MMA, so I can't complain. You know? <laughs> well, I hope you get to stand and bang in the next one. I'll yeah. just check that there were no, um, no, no more. Just a lot of people watching and saying hi. So. Yeah. Amazing, guys. Thank you for joining me. One last time, Jesse, you tell people where they can watch. Cage Fighter, Worlds Collide, available May 16th at 7 p.m. on Fight TV. Um, and we're putting, you know, just, just Google that or we're putting the, the link on all of our social media platforms. You can follow Cage Fighter. Um, it's uh, on Facebook as Cage Fighter Movie, Instagram as well as Cage Fighter Movie and same Cage Fighter MOV on Twitter. So, yeah, give us a follow and, and spread the word. You've got nothing else to do, guys. You're not going out. So <laughs> exactly. get a takeaway, get a bottle of wine and watch this film. We'll put the ticket link below the interview as well. It was so nice speaking to you guys. Well, thank you pleasure. for trialing Zoom with me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. All right. See you. Thank you.